My name is Carl Schusterman. I'm an immigration attorney, and I'd like to tell you some things about President Obama's new Deferred Action Program. People have come to me and said, oh, can I apply for the DREAM Act? And I said, there is no DREAM Act. This is not a law. This is an exercise of discretion by the prosecutorial powers in the administration. And even, even 30 years ago, when I was a prosecutor for the Immigration Service, we didn't deport everybody. Some people deserve to stay in the United States. What's really exciting about this is over one million young people who came to the United States very innocently with their parents are now going to have the opportunity to apply for this program and to apply for work cards. So there's seven qualifications, and let, let me just name all seven for you. Number one, this program was announced on June 15, 2012. Uh, the first requirement is that you be under the age of 31 on that date. The second requirement is that you came to the U.S. originally prior to your 16th birthday. The third requirement is that you've resided continuously in the U.S. since the, uh, until the program was announced on June 15th, that you were physically present at least five years before June 15th, that you came to the U.S. illegally, or possibly you came on a visa, but you were illegal before June 15, 2012. Could have been the day before. Uh, number six, you must be either in school, have achieved a high school degree, a GED, or be a veteran of the military. And then finally, the last requirement, no one who has a conviction of a felony a significant misdemeanor, or three or more non-significant misdemeanors qualifies. What kind of forms do you have to fill out? Okay, well there's three forms that the government has put up on their website, and we have links from our website as well. The main form is called an I-821D form and that's to be considered for a deferred action. Not everybody who gets deferred action gets a work card, so you have to file an I-765 work application. And because work cards are not automatic for everybody who gets uh, deferred action, you also have to fill out what they call an I-765WS, or worksheet, and show that it's essential that you get employment authorization. Um, can you travel out of the U.S.? Well, you can apply for a travel permit, but they'll only be granted in rare cases where there are humanitarian concerns, where your education, you're going to go to a foreign university, or where you have a job abroad. And you have to remember that because you probably have a lot of unlawful presence in the U.S., you could be triggering some negative immigration consequences by traveling in and out of the United States. When you first submit your application, they're going to look it over, they're going to send your, it's, call you in for fingerprints, and they're going to send those fingerprints to the FBI and check out to make sure that you don't have a criminal record, or if you do have a minor criminal record, that it doesn't disqualify you from eligibility. Now, how about if maybe you came into the United States as a very small child, but you've had trips in and out of the United States. What happens in that case? Well, the trips to qualify must be brief, casual, and innocent. This is something from a decision called Flutie versus Rosenberg that occurred a couple of years after I left the Immigration Service in the 1980s, and take a long time to go into that. But just so you have at least a brief guide, you cannot leave the U.S. for any unlawful purpose. You know, I mean, obviously if you're going to another country to do a drug deal or something like that, you do not qualify for this program. And you cannot have left the country because a judge or the immigration service ordered you deported from the United States and you were, and if you were deported, you're not qualified for this program. Now, how about criminal convictions? Um, what qualifies as a felony? I said anybody who has a felony doesn't qualify for this program. A felony would be something, not necessarily that the state that you live in says is a felony, but that the federal government says it is punishable 
by a sentence of one year or more. And remember, that's in the statute. Even if you got a lesser sentence, if you could have been serving one year or more, you're not qualified. How about a significant misdemeanor? And now here, the Immigration Service is relatively explicit about what they mean. If you have a crime of domestic violence, you hit your, your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, you have sexual abuse or exploitation, you have a burglary conviction, you have the unlawful possession or use of a firearm, you have drug distribution or trafficking, or, and this is kind of a new thing for this law, you have driving under the influence conviction of narcotics or alcohol. And if you have any kind of criminal record, you really should consult with an attorney. You know, I mean, some cases you can do this by yourself. <clears throat> but in, in this case, you may have a conviction that could be reduced. Maybe you have a driving under the influence of alcohol that could be reduced to reckless driving, and that's what you would need to qualify. Um, but any crime where the sentence that you actually received was 90 days or over will disqualify you. Now, how about if you have smaller misdemeanors? I mean, will that uh, disqualify you? Yes, if you have three or more, but some misdemeanors don't really count under this law as misdemeanors. And those, law, those misdemeanors can be traffic offenses. They can be driving without a license. Um, they could be a conviction that was expunged from your record. Usually the Immigration Service could deport somebody even if you're conviction has been expunged, but you can qualify for deferred action with an expunged conviction, or possibly even a juvenile conviction. But immigration is going to look at these expunged and juvenile convictions on a case-by-case -case basis. And some people won't qualify because they might think they're a terrorist, they might be in a gang, they might be engaging in what immigration thinks are criminal activities, but you don't have an actual conviction. So. Be aware of that. So what kind of evidence are you going to need to supplement the application and prove to Immigration Service that you meet these seven requirements? And my usual rule of thumb is you give the government evidence that is not subject to fraud. You give them official paperwork. So if you have financial records, you have credit cards, you have pay stubs, you have things like that, you have medical records, you have school records, employment records, military records, whatever the official record that you have that can't be you know, easily copied or, or made up, that's what the government's going to want to see. Now can you ever use affidavits? Sometimes, but in very limited circumstances. Let's say that you are having a hard time proving that you came in before your 16th birthday to the United States, or that you have numerous trips in and out of the country, or trips that you really can't prove the date you came in and came out, well then, if you have two or more affidavits by other people, that would be very helpful. What other people? I mean, you can have your best friends, but uh, if you can possibly have a teacher, a priest, somebody in a position of authority who's very unlikely to lie to try to help you out, that would be very, very helpful. Um, but do not think you can use affidavits for those other five requirements. You're going to have to have official records. How about if you're in removal proceedings? Or what, what if you were already ordered removed by an immigration judge and the government hasn't come to pick you up? Are you qualified for this? And the answer is, in general, yes. So, that, I mean, this is great news. There's a lot, maybe six, seven hundred thousand people have removal orders and they'll be able to come out of the shadows and apply for deferred action in the United States. Um, now, how about if you're presently in removal proceedings and you're applying for adjustment of status, cancellation of removal, you can also apply to the USCIS for deferred action. How about if you're actually in immigration detention, either because you have a removal order or because you're under some kind of detention and they haven't had your hearing yet? You can apply, the good news is you can apply for deferred action 
but you must not apply to USCIS. In that case only, you must apply to ICE. Um, and anybody who's in removal proceedings can apply if they meet the criteria with one exception. Um, if you're not in removal proceedings, you must be at least 15 years old to apply. If you're in removal proceedings and, or you're under a removal order, you don't necessarily have to be 15 years old. So you've applied, you have applied with hopefully not, but with a notario, an immigration consultant, somebody who's not a lawyer, or maybe you just decided to apply on your own and you're denied. Can you appeal? Nope, there's no appeals. Can you file a motion to reopen or have the government re reconsider the case? Can't do that either. So what kind of relief can you get once you're denied? Well, in very limited cases, let's say the government asks you for more evidence and they send that request to the wrong address and you have proof that you've notified them of your correct address, you can ask the government to send you that request again. So you can reopen your case in that circumstance. But my advice is that if you get turned down, I don't see anything in the government rules that, permit, that prohibits you from reapplying. So if you didn't do it right the first time, do it right the last time. Good luck to all of you.